Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this presentation is titled The University of Iowa Engine Series of Satellites, A Mysterious Disappearance, this was human, not spacecraft, and Did I Just Kill the Satellite? That's a comment from a guest controller who was my girlfriend, fiancé, became wife. Uh, she thought she had destroyed the satellite, but I'll get to that in just a moment. As I mentioned in a previous presentation, I had worked for Dr. James Van Allen in, in, in several capacities, and this whole thing started out with the raccoons, which were launched in the early 50s, and uh, on the left is my display case, uh, where I have a couple of these that, that weren't fired, and there's a very young Dr. James Van Allen on the right side holding the uh, raccoon with uh, the rocket uh, attached to it. Now, of course, the Russians had the first artificial satellite in orbit, Sputnik 1, quickly followed by Sputnik 2, which had the, uh, the first instrumentation package, uh, and then the U.S. launched Explorer 1. Explorer 1 had an instrumentation uh, package there uh, that consisted of uh, 18 pounds, of which 40% was the uh, mercury chemical batteries that powered the satellite and that power lasted for four months. The rest of it was the radiation detectors and uh, there were 20 transistors on this initial satellite. Uh, in the picture there is uh, Dr. William Pickering on the left. He was a program manager. In the center is Dr. James Van Allen and on the right is Werner Von Braun. Now, of course, you can imagine the uh, tracking network wasn't very extensive back then. The satellite actually operated on 108.03 megahertz, and uh, ham radio operators could pick it up, as they did the uh, Sputnik series. But um, they collected data, and the idea was, since the um, ability to uh, track this satellite was quite limited, they were going to have a little recorder on there. Well, unfortunately, it wasn't ready in time. But Ed Freun, who was the head machinist uh, there in Iowa City, and he actually helped me uh, when I was building my particle accelerator uh, with a few parts and machining and stuff like that for this uh, high school kid who uh, tended to hang around. Um, he, uh, uh, we, we became friends. And uh, I later, during his last decade of life or so, I gave him all his uh, uh, flight reviews. He had his own farm uh, just south of Iowa City with his own airstrip and his own J3 Cub. And uh, we used to fly off that airstrip, and uh, we, we had a lot of fun. But anyway, this satellite operated for uh, four months and uh, came out of orbit in the 1970s. Ed later did develop a series of recorders that were used on the satellites. And um, actually, when I talk about the Engine 5, one of the aspects there was we could record it and we could download the recordings um, of, uh, of the passes. Um, and he actually has one of his recorders uh, in the uh, Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. on display. Or, you know, they, they switch out displays. It was there for a while, at least. Uh, I don't know if it's still there. But this led to some of the uh, very early explorations of what would later be known as the Van Allen radiation belts. Now, the University of Iowa had a series of engine satellites. Uh, they, they called the first five engine, and then they uh, determined, mm, maybe that's not the most politically correct, so they changed it to Hawkeye. But anyway, um, the, the first five of these used a, a unique method of stabilization. Since they were going to be operating uh, around the magnetic poles, they put a bar magnet in the satellite, and that kept the satellite oriented. Uh, they did that on the first five. The sixth one, they use uh, spin stabilization. Now, here is the very first Engine 1 satellite. It was launched uh, 29 June 1961, and uh, it ceased operation 6 March 1963. It failed to separate from the, uh, the satellite uh, there. One of the satellites, uh, SOLRAD-3, which uh, apparently is still in orbit, this is Engine number 2. It... Uh, Unfortunately, it was launched 24 January 1962, but the upper stage failed and it did not reach orbit. See, this is a problem in the early days. The, uh, the satellites weren't that good. The rockets weren't that good. Uh, if you got to orbit, that was great, but uh, it certainly wasn't assured. 
Okay, then along came Engine 3. That was launched in December 1962, and it operated till August 1968 and came out of orbit. Uh, That's when it came out of orbit in 1968, and it ceased operation. Now, I was 12 years old at the time this one was launched, and I was a high school kid who hung around the physics building. I was going to be a a physicist. I was going to be a nuclear physicist, actually. And this is Engine 4. I actually uh, remember... Uh, seeing this being built and coming right up next to it. It was in the basement of the old physics building, now the math building, but it was in the basement there. And I would wander around there um, when I wasn't in school. And uh, I actually got right up next to this. This is before the era of clean rooms and stuff like that. You you could actually uh, get right up uh, to the satellites and, and see them. Well, then we come up with Engine 5, and this was the uh, satellite that I actually got to uh, work as an operator on it and actually uh, control it, which is really cool. Uh, It was launched 8 August 1968, and uh, it operated till June of 71, and basically um, the satellite was decaying, but we were the problem was we run out of money to uh, to keep it going. It was still uh, producing decent data. Uh, on the left, you see that's it's all stowed, uh, ready to be launched under the uh, the nose cone. And of course, on the right is the various instruments, uh, scientific instruments. Um, that are extended and uh, that it used to collect data. Now, the interesting thing was they took the satellite, they put it in front of the physics building, and they put a bunch of arc lights around it, and and the light was just absolutely blinding. Uh, And to tell you how intense it is in space, that blinding light only brought the photocells up to 40% of their operational capability. So that's how kind of, uh, um, you know, bright it is out there in space. And this is the last one, uh, which was Engine 6. It was launched in 1974, 3 June of 1974. By then, I had gone into the Air Force, and I was kind of out of things. And it ceased operation in April of 1978. Now, I want to get back to talking about the Engine 5. Now, this is up in the second floor of the physics building, the new physics building in Iowa City, the current one. And that is my girlfriend, fiance, uh, wife of 52 years there in front of the, uh, the control panel for the satellite. Uh, we have the, uh, the tape drive there in the left side of the picture. Uh, right about eye level, just a little bit higher, is the, uh, the keypad that we use to uh, send commands to the, uh, the satellite. Behind her is a scope that we could look at the data and various other uh, instrumentation there for monitoring the health of the satellite. Across the room, about 20 feet away, was one of these old big printers that could chunk a chunk a chunk out a line of data at the time and I had to go over there and uh, see the printout of the spray spacecraft's uh, voltage the solar cell output the status of the various experiments and that and I basically could see the the health of the spacecraft and that was important because as it it decayed um, had to watch the voltages very carefully uh, once it went in into uh, darkness Now, here is a color picture. Yes, we did have color way back then. This is a color picture. uh, Same one, Chris, there. And uh, she would would watch me operate the satellite. And uh, one day, um, I I let her send a few commands. Now, uh, you see that scope behind us. We actually... uh, it was reduced to an audio frequency and we you could actually listen to the data stream on the satellite and you you could actually hear um, you could hear the marker uh, kind of pings would go ka-ching 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 and then as you turned uh, the experiments on that's what we controlled with a little uh, keypad there as you brought experiments up uh, as it came on the pass uh, you could hear it change well there was one rate uh, where you could dump the data at a very high rate it was called High rate. It was four up. I remember that command. Well, every once in a while, you'd get a spurious command. And that's what happened. I had her send a few commands, and somehow uh, four up got there to go ching like that. And she jumped back. She thought she had destroyed the satellite. So I commanded four down, and everything was uh, fine after that. And this is a picture of me. It's, uh, you know, these old Polaroid cameras. Uh, when you're pressing the button down, sometimes you jiggle it. Uh, um, that's me there, uh, yeah, standing in front of it. But I want to want to talk to you about uh, one thing that was kind of interesting about this. Uh, we had a um, antenna range 
uh, the main the main uh, function was on the second floor. That's where I was uh, of the physics building in Iowa City, Iowa, and North Liberty, Iowa, about seven miles to the north, had the tracking station, and we had a microwave link, and I would talk to technicians up there. Uh, the blue arrow is the sixty foot receiving dish. The yellow arrow is the ten kilowatt uh, helical uh, antenna that we use to transmit um, uh, commands to the satellite. And the building there is where the technicians were. And I would talk to them on the headset that you saw there. And, uh, you know, we'd uh, uh, they'd have the uh, uh, receiving antenna positioned. And as it would come over uh, the horizon, I'd start uh, turning the commands on and stuff like that. Well, the guy who ran the uh, tracking station up there, and I'll use his name, uh, Dunlevy, because uh, there's probably people still looking for this guy to this day. Uh, he absconded one night, apparently, uh, allegedly, you have to use that word, allegedly, with a lot of people's money uh, on a kind of a solar scam. And some of the technicians said this guy wasn't uh, the very nice guy, the way he treated his wife. It was kind of embarrassing uh, when they went over there for social events. But anyway, he disappeared. But um, we had a few instances where there was what I'll call anomalous propagation, where I, it was going on for like an entire week. And I operated this satellite for about a year and a half, and this is the only time we got it. But during this one week period, I could actually turn on the satellite two minutes before it came over the horizon. We were actually getting nice propagation over the horizon. So I would turn it on. I would, we would collect extra data. I would have the thing, uh, operating. And then, um, the first time I shut things off as it went over the horizon, but then I could hear the, uh, the carrier going for another two minutes. So the next day I got a little braver. I, uh, I waited a minute and then the next day I was doing like two minutes and that went on. And then, uh, one time in the middle of the pass, he, uh, Dunlevy comes out there, and uh, he didn't like me very much. Uh, I was kind of a smart aleck kid, and he comes out there in the middle of the pass, and everything's running fine, and he's listening in, and of course we're coming up, you know, one minute till LOS, or calculated LOS when it goes over the horizon, and I hadn't done anything. And, uh, well, it's 30 seconds now, and it, it usually took a good 20 seconds to command all the, uh, um, the experiments off before it went over the horizon. And you didn't want to go over the horizon with everything running. See, the satellite uh, was getting old. Uh, when it went into darkness, I had to go back and forth between the command thing, the printer, to watch the voltage go down because the batteries were getting bad, the solar cells were getting bad. And uh, if we were in darkness and the voltage was going down, before it would trip off and go into a safety mode, I had to fire, uh, turn off an experiment. So it's kind of like, you know, where you're on the good side of the technician or not if you got your experiment turned off. So I would have to watch it, turn them off, and uh, keep the satellite alive, uh, the battery voltage up and up before it went over the horizon, and then I'd fire it off. But, okay, this day, back to the story. Uh, it's about to go over the horizon. He said, you better shut things down. And I go, oh, no, I got plenty of time. And I guess the other technicians out there, you know, they didn't tell them what had been going on, and they were just kind of laughing about the whole thing, you know, quietly, of course. And then it goes a minute, and he says, he says, I don't know what you're doing, but you better shut that down. I could, oh, no, I got plenty of time. Oh, and I guess he was just giving li livid. He told my boss that if I'd been in the room, I'd had to pick up myself off the floor. Uh, that's what he, uh, my boss told me the next day, who thought it was pretty funny too. So a minute 30 after we had supposedly should have had uh, loss of signal over the horizon, I start firing it down. And then, uh, of course, I'm getting the carrier, ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. So I just said, uh, well... I could have let it wrong, long, run longer. I, I shut it off too early. And I guess he just got furious. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, yeah. Uh, my uh, personality got me in a lot of trouble over the years, but it was fun, too. And here's the uh, University of Iowa Physics Building. Uh, we were on the second floor at the far end. And years later, I came back. There's my vet. There's my uh, girlfriend, fiancé, now wife of 52 years. And there's one last view of the Engine 5 satellite, and that was a that was a very good satellite. And of course, you remember that very young picture picture of Dr. James Van Allen. And there he is up in his his, his really nice uh, office up on the seventh floor. And a uh, uh, picture on the right is when they dedicated the physics building and changed it to uh, Van Allen Hall. So. 
I hope you liked that little uh, story about the University of Iowa's engine slash Hawkeye satellites. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.